Okay, so we've seen Glut, we've seen SDL, now it's time to take a look at the Windows API. Yep. So we're going to u- utilize the Windows API to create an application that's going to perform exactly the same as both the Glut and SDL applications right. did. Little rotating cube guy. Yep, little rotating cube where the user's going to be able to interact with that cube through pressing buttons on his keyboard, the arrow buttons. Yep. Now, since we are dealing directly with the Windows API, we will be dealing with a little bit more code. Yes, a lot more low-level stuff. That's right. Not so much the OpenGL stuff, just a Mm -hmm. few little changes there. As a matter of fact, we'll be bringing our code in from the other applications into this one once we get a base application up and running with a window. Yeah. So, I mean, there's quite a bit of stuff to do. I (laughs) mean, looking at this, it's like... 500 lines of code almost. So there's a lot of things to do. Um, if you remember from the intro, we said about creating a new context, a rendering context, mm-hmm. and with Glut and when we're using SDL, we didn't need to do that. However, when we're using Windows API, we do need to do that. We need to do all of that manually. Right. So let's go ahead and start out by creating our new project, as we've done many times already. And let's go create a Win32 project, and we'll just call this Windows Demo. Under application settings, let's go ahead and set this to empty project. And let's go ahead and create our source file. So we'll call this our Windows demo source file.cpp. And let's go ahead and set up the uh, properties inside of our for our linker right off the bat. Mm-hmm. So let's go into here and do our OpenGL32.lib and our GLU32.lib, just for starters. Right. And everything else, that's all we really need for additional dependencies because all the Windows libraries and everything are automatically linked. Exactly. So let's go ahead and press OK on this. First thing we're going to do, include our Windows.h. Unlike the in the previous one when we were doing SDL, remember we had that whole if defined, if not defined, and all that. We're developing for Windows, so there's absolutely no point in having that if not defined, etc. And of course, we also need our gl uh, gl dot, uh, slash would be good gl dot h and, and glu dot h and our gl glu dot h. So <clears throat> there are quite a few things, and again, like the last time we're um, in the SDL video, we're going to first create a simple window, get that all working, and then we're going to import the previous code. Right. So let's go ahead and start by creating a few variables that we're going to need. First thing is an HTC, um, a device context. Remember, we talked about the rendering context. A device context is something specific to Windows that allows us to draw it. It describes a window, if you will, the properties of any given window. It allows us to draw to it when you're doing things like drawing text or drawing a rectangle. You need an HTC that can allow you to identify which window you're drawing to. So let's go ahead and create this, so our HTC, and we'll initialize this to null. We also have our rendering context, so that's going to be an HGLRC, and our rendering context We'll default that to null as well. We'll be initializing all of these in the functions to come. And then we also have a handle, which identifies a window, essentially. So our high, what I like to say, a high wind, but it's basically a handle to our window. And an H instance. For every instance of an application inside of Windows, we have an instance, an H instance. So we'll just call this H instance, and we can default this. Uh, let's not default it to anything. Let's just leave it like that. So... That's pretty much the main things we have. Let's go ahead and create the window width and window height that we had before as well. Okay. So we have our constant GL size I window width equals 500, and our constant GL size I window height. And with that, let's go ahead and start creating the main functions for our application. So... The first thing we need is a win main. Unlike all the other applications we've created up till now, they've all been like int main or whatever. In this case, it starts out with a win main. So what we're going to do is create int returns of type win, and we're using the win API, so you append it with a win API. And then we have our win main. Now, a few things that are passed to this win main is an h instance, which windows passed to us identifying our window. And we'll use these parameters of our WinMain to initialize our own local variables here. And we have our H instance of our previous instance. And this is any previous windows we may have had. Uh, string things that um, the user could have passed to us, which is an LP command line. Passing stuff to us on the command line. 
and the current state of the window. So we have our end command show. All right, so um, much like SDL, we're going to be controlling the main loop for our code, handling all the messages and everything. So we're going to need a something to hold the messages, and we'll use a type called msg message, mm -hmm. and we'll just call that message. We'll be using that in our main loop. And again, we'll also have a done so that we can identify whether or not the loop is finished. So int done equals zero. And we're going to need to create our OpenGL window. And there isn't, unfortunately, any call that just says create GL window. There's just nothing like that. Right. We're going to have to write our own. So we're going to do a, we're going to make a function called create GL window. And let's see, what are the main things we need? We'll pass it the caption. So we'll call it window OpenGL demo. And we'll pass it the window width and window height. Much like when we were doing our init GL where we're passing the width and the height. And let's see, what else do we need? Um, we'll also pass it the bit depth that we're going to use. In this case, we'll have it 16 bits um, for, for the color depth. Right. Um, and we'll have that. Let's see. We'll also we'll have it return um, true or false depending on whether or not it works. So if it doesn't work, if it does not create the window, we need to go ahead and delete the window because it doesn't automatically delete it for us. And unfortunately, again, there isn't uh, something that directly does this for us. We'll create a function for that as well called kill window. Um, and we'll just pass that. And then we'll just return from our int main. Otherwise, if it does work, we're going to have a loop, just like we did in SDL, that says while it's not done, um, loop through all messages. Something like that. And, and we'll fill that in as we get there. And let's see. Finally... Well, after this loop is done, again, we'll also do the same thing we did before. If there is an event saying we need to stop, then we're going to exit out of this loop. And at this point, we need to kill anything that we've created, which will be our rendering context, our handle, all that stuff. We need to get rid of it, clean up after ourselves. So we'll call our kill window. And then finally, we'll just return whatever the last message was, which, of course, if, if we're out of this loop, we're going to be the last message, which would be an exit. So with that, let's go ahead and start creating our create GL window. And this is going to be pretty much the biggest function that we have in this entire thing. I mean, because this is the, the core part where we set up the rendering context, we create our window, we register the class with windows and all that other stuff. This is where you really begin to appreciate these other window interfaces that make life very simple. Very, for very you. simple. For those that have used... Um, like WX widgets, I mean, it's so very simple to create a window, get everything set up. Um, with Windows API, it's really fast, very connected with Windows, but it can be a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's create our GL, create GL window, and we'll pass in our title, our width, our height, and our bits. And our bits. And you'll notice this bool, capital B-O-O-L, is a Windows type def um, that associates it with a bool. So just to stay in, since we are work developing for Windows, stay in its convention is always a good thing. Um, one thing we'll need is a, uh, a window, uh, a pixel format for our window. Because for every rendering context, you need to tell the rendering context which pixel format we want to we want to use. And you'll have to specify your own custom pixel format, send it to the rendering context before it can get created. So let's go ahead and create a GLU int pixel format. Like I said, this holds the results um, after you search for a pixel format that matches what you're wanting. So you have your pixel format. We're also going to need um, the window class structure. What this is essentially, um, it describes your window, how it actually works. So the, the caption, all that other stuff. Uh, window class WC. And some sort of, uh, we also need a variable that stores the styles for our window, whether it's maximized, whether it has a maximized icon, minimized icon, and all that other stuff. Hmm. EX style or extended style. And a second one, this is the extended style. I was referring to the style as a whole. So we have two, one that's an extended style that has extra ones, and one that's just the plain style for the window. And finally, we also need a, rec a rect, which has a left, top, bottom, and right, that holds what our window, the size of our window. So this is a very easy one to initialize because we're past the width and the height. 
So window rect. And to set this, we'll just do a window rect dot. And you'll notice bottom, left, right, and top. So this is really easy. Left is simply going to equal zero. Window rect right is going to equal our width, which is passed into us. Wind rect um, top is going to equal zero. Window rect dot bottom is going to equal our height. Now, here's the, the hardest part, probably, is we're going to need, well, almost. Uh, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. Uh, there's one thing we're going to do first is get our H instance. Remember, we defined our H instance here, um, right here as a global variable. We need to initialize this. And that can be easily done with our get module handle. This is an API call that gets the current module's handle so that we can use it. Um, because a lot of Win API calls require us to get it. Um, so we have our wc.style, and we're going to set this to um, have a redraw, horizontal redraw, and a vertical redraw. So we have our redraw, our csv redraw, and our cs own dc, which means we are controlling our own dc. Okay, so... Right at this point, you'll notice that we're modifying this Windows class. If, let me see if this brings this up. Hopefully it will. Yeah, we have a bunch of things that we need to set before we can actually initialize our window class or register it. Um, you notice we have the style, which we just set, our icon, what icon is associated with our window, the cursor associated with our window, and all sorts of other things that we need to set. So that's basically what we're doing at this point, is getting everything working. Um, our WND WinProc. Now, everybody... Um, uh, the win procedure, window procedure, is what is going to handle our events. Every time there's an event that needs to be handled, that is going to get called. Unlike when we're using glut, where you have to specify what function gets called for a particular message, this message, this function gets called for every single message that 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 there might be, happen. Hmm. Um, so we have our CLB extra, and that basically we don't need any extra window data for this guy. Just keep set it as zero. There's a lot of, that's one thing that when you're working with, um, and for this one, this is extra window data. We don't need anything for it. Um, when you're working with the Windows API, there's a lot of little features that just make you go, why is this here? Or there's just a whole lot of things you need to remember for every single one. And if you really want to go in and understand how each one works, there's a lot of different things you can set for every single one of these parameters. And, of course, at this point, using MSDN. MSDN is your big-time friend for this yes, stuff. Yes, he is. Um, so, of course, if you need to, you can um, just double-click on one, press F1, go into the documentation, and learn all about it. So now we need to go ahead and set our uh, instance. Yep. So, of course, we just got that with our module handle, so we'll just set it to H instance, like so. Our icon. Our icon. And we're just going to load a, a blank icon. We don't really need anything here. So, the win logo, which is a default logo inside of uh, Windows that we can just use, because we didn't make our own icon. Right. Um, now our cursor. Our cursor. Same thing goes here. We just want our default arrow. So cursor, no, our IDC arrow. And we also want to set our background to something. And in this case, we're using OpenGL, so we really don't need a background. Now let's see, what else do we need? Our menu name. In this case, we are not using a menu. So we'll just set this to no. And finally, a class name. This can be pretty much anything you want, but in this case, we'll just call it um, OpenGL, which specifies our window the name for our window. Because at this point, we're going to need to register this class that we've just initialized. Remember, we've just created our WND class, which is a structure that holds information out about, of a particular window. Mm -hmm. And before you can actually create that window, you need to register it with Windows so that it knows about it and understands what it is. So at this point, we're going to do a register class. And then, as you can see, it is looking for a constant win class pointer. So let's just go ahead and pass it ampersand wc. And at this point, um, actually, let's go ahead and finish creating all of this. Okay. Uh, but there's a lot of 
places where things can mess up at this point. I mean, register class can fail. I mean, a bunch of things that we're about to do can fail. So we're going to create a macro in a minute after we're done creating all of this that allows us to do error checking. Because if you're a programmer and it doesn't work on someone's computer and you're like, well, which part failed? When we're working with SDL, there's only like two things that could possibly go wrong. When we're using this, there's a whole lot of things that could go wrong, so you want to make sure that there's an easy way to identify what problem it was. Um, so remember, we still have these two, WEX style and W style. So we're going to go ahead and initialize both of these to something that makes sense. Um, WSEX app window. It's not too easy typing and looking at the same time. <laughs> no, I understand. And, and our DW style. Yeah. And WS overlap, overlap window. window. All right. So now let's go ahead and initialize our window, um, or, or just the rectangle for it. Remember, we have this rectangle, but we haven't used it yet. So let's go ahead and come down here and initialize it. So adjust window rect ex and pass it our rectangle. LP, this refers to a pointer to type rect. And so anytime you see an LP, this is a common Windows convention that simply says a pointer to whatever is after that. In this case, a rect. So we simply need to pass it our window rect. And we need to pass it our DW style. So DW style. We are not using a menu, so set that to false. And our extended style is simply ex style. And of course, we could just put these guys right in here if we wanted to, but keeping them separate just keeps it that much cleaner, which is always nice. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and actually create our window. And there's going to be a whole lot more properties with this one as well. <laughs> it just doesn't thin. Yeah. Um, Right here, remember we have our handle. When we create our window, we're going to get our handle returned back to us so that right. we can use it for later, um, whatever reason we want to use it. Um, so we have our high wind or handle equals create window ex. We're going to pass it our extended style, which we've already initialized. And the class name. Remember, we registered our class. At this point, we can pass it OpenGL, and it now recognizes what that is. Um, what kind of title do we want? Remember, we pass that into this function right here, so we simply pass it that right there. And what type do we want? Uh, let's see, uh, DW style and style, whichever was passed to us. Oh, and oh uh, yeah, actually it's not style; it's just DW style. Oh, and WS. Right. Right. Just getting confused with my own notes. WS Clip Siblings. Yeah. This prevents flickering on a lot of machines, which is good. And Clip Children, same thing. Same idea, anyway. Yeah. And then we're going to actually set the uh, window area, the position. So we're going to start out at 0, 0. And the actual width, which is going to be, if you remember here, we have the width and the height. We can simply do a, um, just pass it our width and our height which is passed into us here. Or, of course, we could use our window rect and calculate it, but since we know what it is, there's then, no point. Yeah, you're set. Um, and then what else do we need here? Uh, let's go, uh, The parent, we don't have any parents, so let's just set this to null. Our menu, we don't have any menus, so let's set that to null. Our instance, instance. we just got it, so from the get module thing. <laughs> and we have instance, and this guy is just going to be null as well. So there we have it. We've created our window. And now comes the part where we need to actually um, set our pixel format so that we can start, we can create our context for OpenGL and get that all set up. Okay. Um, so the first thing we're going to need is an HDC. And remember, that's the device context that we can use that describes the drawing area for our window. So let's go ahead and initialize our HDC to equal HDC and pass it our handle, which we just got from our create window EX. Now let's get our pixel format. But the pixel format is something that we basically it asks Windows and says, is there any pixel format that meets the requirements that I want? But we first need to set up a structure that allows us to send that structure and say, is there anything close or similar to this? And it returns it to us. Um, so what we're going to need to do is create a static pixel format descriptor called PFD. And that's going to have, we're going to initialize this, 
as you can see, static. Let me see if I can go ahead and press F1 on this. Make sure. Let's see. Just give everyone a second here. Pixel format descriptor. Just one second here, so I can open up the documentation for this guy. Just give it a second here. It's coming. It's coming. It's just slow. Yeah. Almost there. Okay, so it doesn't like doing that at all. Let me see if... Okay. Okay, here we have. Yeah. Um, the structure describes the pixel format of drawing surface, as I just said, and we have to initialize all of these things right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, it's scary. And basically we need to initialize all of these and then send that to choose pixel format, which is another function, and then we can actually have uh, actual pixel format for our HDC. So let's go back to here and start initializing this bad boy. The first thing, if we just switch back here real quick, is the size. This is really simple. Simply call the C++ size of function and pass it pixel format descriptor. So it's basically asking for the size of our struct here. And what version number? Just one. Um, we need to be able to draw to a window. So these are a few properties of our window that we need to have. So draw to window. We also need it, the pixel format to support OpenGL. So we have support OpenGL. We also want to support double buffering. Remember before with Clut, we simply passed one thing. Single. No, it's not that simple. <laughs> double buffer. So double buffer. And if I don't make any spelling errors on this one, that will be a miracle. What kind of format do we want to support? RGB, RGBA, or whatever. In this case, we do want to support RGBA. So we'll have PDF type RGBA. What, what do we want our color depth to be? Well, we passed it into this function, so bits. Um, the color bits, if we check back over into here, you'll notice we have the color bits, red bits, shift, green shift. We'll set all of those to zero. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. And then we don't have any alpha buffer. And we don't have an, any other shift bit. Um, accumulation buffer. Accumulation buffer is often used if you want to do things like motion blur or something like that. It basically allows you to stack different... Um, frames onto it to accumulate it, essentially. So it allows you to do things like motion blur. And there are some accumulation buffer bits. Since we don't want an accumulation buffer in the first place, we can just ignore all of these bits. And what kind of Z buffer do we want? The depth buffer. And since we're using 3D objects, we need that. So we're going ahead and set this to a 16-bit depth buffer. Uh, we're not using a stencil buffer. Um, no other auxiliary buffer. And the dra main drawing plane is going to be the PFD main plane, and this is just a reserved attribute in case they let you extend it, so we'll just set that to zero, and other layer mass, we'll set that to zero as well. Not too bad, it all makes sense, especially it's if not you... Not too bad. Not, not, not terrible. Um, if you look back here, all of these pretty much make sense. Again, um, there are a lot of things here, like the accumulation buffer, just don't worry about that. Death buffer, 16 bits. So, those are the main two things that we need to worry about. That and the, the bit depth as well. Um, so as long as you understand what's going on there, you should be set to go. Um, at this point, let's see, have I set the HTC? Yes, I've set the HTC. Actually, let me move this down here just to be a little bit more clean. All right, so let's initialize our pixel format. Equal to choose pixel format and pass it our HTC, which we just got from the handle, and pass it the struct that we just created, which is our PFD. Now let's actually, since it's just gotten the pixel format, let's try to set that onto our HDC. So set pixel format, pass it our HDC, pass it our pixel format, and again pass it our structure. Now that we have all of that, we need to create a context, a rendering context for OpenGL. And for this very specific purpose, we have WGL, which is a set of libraries outside of OpenGL that allows OpenGL to interface with Windows, and the, that's the WGL library. So we're given um, a function called WGL create context that creates our rendering context. So you pass it your HDC, and it returns your rendering context. So HRC equals WGL create context. And then we actually need 
to attach that rendering context to our HDC. So our WGL make current HDC, our rendering context. So attach the rendering context onto the HDC, or the device context. So at this point, everything is created, and all we need to do is actually show our window and display it onto the screen, and then set it to the front, set its focus to true, and then return from the function, and then we're done. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we need to do, really. Yeah, not much. Oh, not much at all. So we show our window, um, our handle, we'll do an SW show, we'll set the it to a foreground. These calls are really straightforward. And again, notice we definitely need that handle so that Windows knows which window we're talking about. It's 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 ID number, if mm -hmm. you will. Set focus. Don't want to beat a horse to death. It's just something that's very important when you're dealing with Windows programming. So we set its focus, and now let's go ahead and just return true. Woo. All right, so there we have that. Now what we need to do is create our, remember if we go all the way back up to, let's see, where was that? Our here, we have our Windows procedure. This is not some magic function that exists by default. We need to actually create this. So let's go all the way up to the top here before the Create Geo window, and let's create this function. So uh, L result, callback. This is a, a very standard way of creating the Windows procedure. It's quite picky about how exactly you define this, so just keep to, to the format that it specifies. It takes in four arguments, the handle of the window that we're dealing with, um, what kind of message it is, so an unsigned integer, you message, and two other parameters, wparam and lparam. These are things that they can depend entirely on what kind of message it is, things are stored, information is stored inside of these two things. And basically, they're an unsigned integer pointer that allows you to, that, that allows you to store pretty much any kind of information you need about a particular message. And then we also have a LParam, which stores even more information about it. And typically, these are divided into um, a switch case that that basically allows us to handle whatever messages we want. So inside the switch case, we could have things like um, whether or not it was closed. So in case if the message was, if the window was closed, we could say wm close. And then inside of here, we'll do a post quit message and pass it as zero. So when this message is, the wm close message is sent to this function, we'll handle it by sending a quit message. If we're not doing anything special, if we don't want to handle this, go to the default case, and we'll just call the default handler for this particular message. And that's under the, um, let me try to remember, what is that called? The default window procedure. I'm trying to find it. Just one second. Oh, yeah, the default windows procedure, which allows us to, allows windows to handle that message so we don't have to worry about it. So default window proc. And we'll pass that the handle. All that the things that were passed to us will be passed to this function. And then we simply return whatever is returned to that. Otherwise, if we have handled the message, it's going to fall through and come to the end here, at which point we need to return something. And to say that you to tell Windows basically that we've handled this message, return is zero. And that says, oh okay, we've handled the message. So we've got that. I'm trying to think, is there anything else we need before that? Let's go down to our um, our main, win main here. And let's go ahead and block in our while not done okay. section of code here so that we can actually start handling messages. So let's say if um, there's a Windows API function call called peak message that allows us to see, much like in the poll for message thing that we did in SDL, that allows us to check whether or not a message is currently pending. So we can say peak message. Remember, we created our MSG up here. Simply pass that. And again, we have our LP, which means a pointer to it of type MSG. So that's simply right up there. And we'll pass it null for the handle. Um, and let's see, message filter min. Message. We don't want any filters for that. And once we've gotten the message, we do want to remove it. So call, pass it remove. And then all we need to do is check to see if message, message not message. Remember, this is a struct that holds all this information about a particular message. If it equals wm quit, 
then simply set done equal to true. Otherwise, if it's something we don't want to bother handling, simply translate the message and pass it message and then dispatch the message. So we got the message from Windows. Now let's send it out, which is in turn going to call our message handling function. function. And with that, I think that's almost everything that needs to be done to actually get this guy working, I think. I'm probably missing something at some point, but that Minus should be right. tons and tons of error checking and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. Um, I did not define my kill window function, and that's kind of an important thing if I'm going to, uh, you know, prevent any memory leaks from happening. So let me go all the way up to here. Let me do it right before my uh, CreateGL window here. And we'll return whether or not kill window succeeded or not, in case something does go terribly wrong. But killing the window shouldn't have a problem, hopefully. <laughs> So if there's a rendering context, remember, kill window, if anything in CreateGL window um, messes up, then it's going to return at some point. We're going to add error handling for all of this, right. at which point, if something screws up, it's going to return, which means if, say, pixel format, this line fails or this line fails, we could not even have a rendering context. Right. So certain things could be totally, so we can't rule out any possibilities for something going wrong. So we'll first say, if we do have a rendering context... Remember, we set rendering context by default to null, right? So if we do have a rendering context, we need to make sure we need to delete it. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that the current um, WGL, OpenGL, is not associated to anything. So we're basically releasing both the HTC and the rendering context by passing both null. And then we're deleting the context. If you create a rendering context, you have to delete it. It's just, it's just a fact. So then we set our rendering context equal to null. And then we also need to release our DC. So if we have our HDC, then we go ahead and release the DC and pass it our handle as well as our HDC. If that doesn't work, then we give some sort of error. Um, same goes for here. If we have a handle, or actually... For this one, I, I kind of made a mistake here. Basically, we want to say, if either of these don't succeed, send off some sort of error message. Um, if either of these do not succeed, if we have a handle and we're incapable of destroying the window, then something obviously went wrong. So we also send an error message for here as well. Let me just put a send error message. You do not need semicolons for error com comments. Just so you know. <laughs> That's right. Um, and finally, remember, we registered that class. Now we need to unregister that. So let's go ahead and do an unregister class and pass it our OpenGL, which is the name that we used, also, uh, as well as the instance that we have. <sighs> and let's go ahead and return true, saying that whatever it was that worked. Uh, we also return a false here and a false here. So there we have it. Um, that should work. I think I meant to say HRC. Wow. Nice. It actually worked. Um, That's so amazing. Let's go ahead and try to run this window. I do expect something to not... Okay. I, wow. Everything worked <laughs> as I expected. That's amazing. Um, so basically, we have our OpenGL demo window. And again, like in SDL... Nothing's getting drawn, right. so we're not getting anything drawn, which is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and exit out of this guy. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and, I guess, copy over the OpenGL code, okay. and then we add the error message afterwards. Okay, sounds good. Um, so let's go on to our development here. Let me go into source code directory. And inside of here, let's go to the SDL demo and just drag and drop this guy in here. And let's see... Let's just take all of these five functions, I believe it is, and copy and paste it over into our program. So let's see. And again, this should be exactly the same. Um, initGL. At some point, we need to call initGL, and no better time than right after we create our window, just like with um, SDL. So let's say window width and window height. 
Let's go back up to the top and make sure that everything um, translates over properly. These two functions remain exactly the same. This guy, we're going to need to change this to get to count. Uh, let's see, get to count. Um, this is a set window caption. Um, set window text, excuse me. Yeah, um, and we need to pass it the handle as well as the title. Just and small changes. Some very, very small changes. And then we need to swap the buffers in the draw scene as well. Uh, let me just try to remember exactly what that call was called. Ah, right. Swap buffers. <laughs> well, which makes sense, but I every know. single one is kind of different. So. It is. When you're working with so many different um, um, windowing interfaces, you, it really gets confusing after a while. So simply call swap buffers and pass it to HTC, and that's that. And let's see, with the check keys, remember we have this whole get tick count thing again, so let's just replace that. And again, get tick count works much like um, the other way, mm -hmm. in, in that it holds, it returns the number of milliseconds. And here, of course, these are going to need to change as well. We can have VK escape. So basically, they just, the syntax, the first four or three or two letters change. In this case, we just change everything to VK instead of. SDLK. It's not too bad, but it is quite a pain if you think about it. You're yeah. going to be missing a oh. couple of things at the very beginning, okay. too, like your uh, Q right, rotate right, right. X and Y. Let me go over to here and go ahead and copy these two. And, of course, we I'm totally missing my uh, keys buffer as well. Basically, we need, uh, much like when we did the original GLUT demo, we need our boolean right. that holds a bunch of keys. 256. 256 keys, in fact. Oh, and we also need our stdio because we have the sprintf and right. we haven't put that anywhere yet. So our stdio.h I believe I put that here last time just to stay consistent. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. Um, of course, we're not calling our draw scene at any point, so we're need going to need to do that. And let me just... Wait one second. And okay. It's back down near the bottom of your... Ah, right. Right here. Loop. So let's go ahead. Whoa. Yeah. What am I doing? Yeah. Draw our scene. And again, we need to check our keys as well. So let's pass that whole if thing. If check keys. In other words, if check keys returns true, then we're done with this loop. So make loop equal to true. Mm hmm Execute that. Let's see if this works. Wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> um, so something's not working with the key handling, and this is totally understandable because, remember, at this point, all we're doing is checking the keys, but we're never setting that key structure. So what we actually need to do is come into our um, window callback here and add a handler, handler for, those, for those keys. Um, so there are two functions that we need. So we have our case WM key down, at which point the user has pressed the key down. And we simply say keys. And when we get a WM key down message, W param holds which key was pressed. So we simply pass W param and set that one equal to true. And in much the same way, we have a WM key up. So let's go ahead and set this to false. And I think that should work. So huh. let's go ahead and try it out. And check nice. it out. There we have it. That didn't require much code. Oh, oh wait. No, We've not got to add even more. Oh, yep. Um, and you'll notice that we can resize the window if we need to. Um, and again, if you wanted to, you can handle the sizing event as well. So the established projection matrix is called on the size event, which is a WM size message. Um, and also, just, just so people know, you can type things like WM close into the index here and get a list of what kind of messages are available to you. So like I was mentioning just a second ago, we have a WM size, a Windows message underscore size mm -hmm. that we can use. Which again, just goes back into that giant switch of processing through all of your messages. That's right, messages. Um, in our WND proc, mm -hmm. or however you want to say it. So at this point, let's let add a little message handling, I mean air handling, so that we can... A little, he says. 
Okay. A lot of error handling, just to make sure that, you know, things don't explode on us. Um, but to make things a little bit more easy, if you will, I would like to have a macro that allows us to, with one line, say, if this call does not work in some way, then send out a message box with some message saying it didn't work, and then return false. Because all of our functions kill window and our create GL window. If false is returned, then we know something went wrong. Right. Um, so let's go ahead and create this macro. Uh, we'll call it check error. So let's define a macro called check underscore error. And let's pass two things, the value that we want checked and the error message. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is check if, actually let me write it out down here just so people completely understand what's going on here. One of the ones in. Let's say we have WGL make current. What I want to do is be able to go check, check error, pass it WGL make current, and then pass it some sort of error saying error make current failed. That's what I want to be able to do with one call. And basically I want this to translate into if WGL make current not W if this failed for some reason then I want to do a message box and then pass it whatever this error is in this case error W um, error make current failed pass that into here and the title will be error and with MB okay and pass it and be icon explanation. And then if and then return false after that. So you can see that having to type all of this manually right. every single time for a ton of different areas. For a ton of different areas. We have this line, this line that could screw up, this line here, this line here, this line could screw up. I mean there's tons and tons of places and for every single line we would have to type Five right. lines of code, and that's just insane. So let's kind of simplify this a little bit by coming into here, creating our macro, and saying if not val, because remember, val is what's passed into us. And with macros, it's really cool because this value, whatever's passed in here, will be replaced word for word right here before actually compiling it, mm -hmm. during the compiling stage. So we can say if not val, let's just make this a little bit cleaner. And surround this in parentheses just in case it's a fairly long statement. Then, and since this is a multi line macro, you're going to need a backslash just to say that it's multi lines. So we come in here and we'll do a little bracket. And we'll do our message box call. So, message box. This is going to be a really long line here. And in this case, we're passing ERR and we want to be able to have something like that here. However, you can't just put in ERR because it could, re could mistake it for something else. What you need is a pound sign ERR, and that tells the macro and the compiler that this is a piece of text, and it needs to replace that with the quotation marks. And then we'll keep the caption at the top of the message box as simply error, and MB OK, and MB icon exclamation. Bink. And then do a, or don't forget our little um, backslash, and then our return false with our backslash, and finally our little end bracket. So now we can actually use this check error function and check it out. Dink. Nice. And at this point, if anything goes wrong in the exiting process for, for make current, it will simply, you know, fix it up. So we could just go in here and add for every single one um, error, deleting, context failed um, we can do the same thing for here say check error if if any of this fails then say real error releasing DC failed and then do the same thing again this is really tiresome. <laughs> Error, uh, destroying window failed. Um, and of course, I don't think we really need. Do, do you want to? 
go through all of them? I th- you can just point them out. Okay. Um, unregistering the class, that's something that can fail, so go ahead and put one for the error checking for this guy. Um, get module handle, we can assume that that's not going to mess up at any point. Registering the class can definitely fail. Um, creating the window, this is something that most definitely can fail. Setting the pixel format, all all four of these lines are something that can most definitely get failed. And at get DC, very unlikely, but possible as well. So for all of these, go ahead and throw in one of these check error macro functions. Send it a logical message so that the user or you knows what's what messed up. And that should be it. So let me make sure that everything else Now you guys understand why I laughed when Joel said let's add a little error checking code. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of places where you would need to add error checking for everything to be perfectly balanced. I mean, using the Windows API, it's fast. It is fast. I mean, if we I'll rerun this guy... But, um, yeah. And we get really good, decent frame rates, but then again, all the other ones were getting full frame rate as well. Exactly. So. I mean, whew, there's yeah. a lot of code. A very good bit of code. Yeah. And it still works fine with the keyboard? Yep, everything works fine with Excellent. the keyboard. And, yeah. All right, so that's, that's really going to wrap it up for the Windows API approach to developing an application that makes use of OpenGL. Hope you're all still alive. Yeah, that was a tough one, guys. <laughs> So with that, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.